Right, I have them, mate. Okay, right, the Big Bad Turbo, second job. Now, thanks if you watched the last video. Amazing comments, thank you so much. We are very excited about it. And interestingly enough, it is insured for Penny to ride. So there's my mission this year, is to get Penny Pit Stop out riding the turbo, which would be rather cool. <laughs> anyway, there we go. What I said I'd do in the last video is a fork alignment one. Now, five years ago, as long as that, October 2012, I made a video which has now got 300 and plus thousand hits on how to align a set of motorcycle forks the easy way. Now, that video has gone so well because it's proved that it is such a needy subject. So many people have this issue with the riding up the road on the bike, the forks feel a little bit out, and they want to know how to align those forks correctly without special equipment or without any specialist know-how. It really is very, very simple indeed. Simple laws of physics. So I'm going to show you today as quick as I can, not too much waffle, and I'm going to put into this video something I left out of the last one, which I thought was obvious, and I think it's indicated to me as the years have gone by, our videos need to be as detailed as they are, because otherwise people are left not quite sure knowing how to finish the job, and that's extremely important. If the videos are any use at all, then they have to be properly comprehensive. So I'm going to do that, hopefully without too much waffle. There it is. The front forks are a little bit out of line. When it rides up the road, it's just a little bit sort of cocked off to the left. So I'm going to sort that out today. And the first thing to do before you go anywhere near the forks, if they are out of line, is you check the rear wheel alignment. Because if the rear wheel is out of alignment in its swinging arm, then the bike is crabbing. If the bike is crabbing, then naturally, the first thing you'll feel is that the bars will be out. So let's check first of all that the rear wheel is aligned so that that isn't the problem. And if it is, real, if it is aligned correctly, then it'll be the forks and I'll show you how to set them straight. Quick as I can. Right, there we go. That warms your legs up. Okay, there we go, straightforward enough. The measuring of rear wheel alignment is simply the case of making sure that the distance this block, this adjuster block, is back on the swing arm is the same distance exactly as the other side. That ensures that the axle that goes through is absolutely 90 degrees to the bike and therefore the rear wheel is aligned. Now you can do it several ways. You can use a ruler. I've got the metal block here. I've got the back of the swing arm here. This bike's got those little marks, little stamp marks on it. They are reliable. Many people have said they're not reliable, don't trust them. Obviously on a 1970s bike with a metal stamped swing arm, perhaps that was the case once, but this is a billet aluminium swing arm and it is precision made so really if you can trust those marks it's fine but also I don't bother with the marks because it's very easy to just measure from the back of this block to the back of the swing arm itself very easy I can either measure it like that or I can take if you've got one a caliper I can just set it there I can measure how much spare gap is left there so there we are that currently measures 22.05 mil. So the gap from there to there, that distance, 22.5 mil. All I've got to do is go to the other side, make sure it's exactly the same. Let's have a look. Right, there we go. Same again. Exactly the same point of measure from there to the back of the swing arm there. It's exactly the same. Absolutely perfect. Nice one. This is a very well maintained bike. I got it from a guy who's a professional mechanic, so I don't expect that to be anything less. However, it's nice to know for sure yourself. So now I know that that's correct. I know it's absolutely bang on. Now I can look at the forks and find out what's up and why they're running just a little bit to one side. I'll show you us now. Okay, here we go, double we can. Right. Now this is the top yoke or top triple treat, this one here. And the only fastener we're going to leave done up is that one. That's the top clamp, and that's the top clamp pinch bolt. We don't touch that, we don't disturb that, we leave that alone because that holds onto the fork legs and allows the bottom one to move. So we have to undo, firstly, we have to undo the center nut. That allows the two yokes, this one and the one below, to realign and move independently of each other. So that's important, essential, to loosen that nut, get it cracked off and loose, and put a whole rotation off and then leave it set. Then we come down one further, we undo here. This is the, the bottom yoke pinch bolts. There's usually two. This is cast iron. Some are aluminium with three bolts, some are bigger, different. Yours may be different, doesn't matter. Just in principle, loosen off those two pinch bolts there and on the other side so that this yoke can swivel around the fork stanchion. That one's gonna hold on to the fork stanchion and this one is not. So that allows the top to hold onto the stanchion 
and the stanchion itself to move and the bottom yoke to line up. And then loosening off that center nut there allows the two to move separately. Now, there are things, that's really fundamentally it. But underneath that or behind that, there are other things that can influence a problem and stop it aligning. Loosen off the axle, get everything afloat down there. Loosen off the caliper and the other side, get that all afloat. Loosen off the mud guard, get that nicely moving around and afloat. And then back off the bolts, the pinch bolts on the bottom yoke. So that's moving too. So the whole bottom end is all floppy and moving around. And just leave those in there done up. Then Right, very important not to get this confused. This is the top nut arrangement here. That's all you need to undo, that one there. Just backed it off a turn and a half. And underneath here, what we've got is the two collars that hold the actual headstock in. They hold the bottom yoke into the frame. Don't loosen those off, leave those alone. That is the amount of pinch that's placed on the bearings. Don't disturb that, don't upset it. That will not need to do anything. All we're trying to do is when you do this, you put, if you now you build, rebuild your front end, the, the bottom yoke goes in, the stem goes up through with a thread and these bolt onto that thread or they screw down onto that thread and then they set the tension. You set those to the exact tension and then after that, with what sticks up above that little thread under there, you then slap the top yoke on it. This just sits on top. So you only need to back that off to allow this to move independently of this. That's the most important thing. Now, this is how you lunge it, plunge it in and out to get them to move. And I'll do the fun bit. Now this is, so it looks a bit weird. This is the process of lunging the forks up and down to allow them to center. You have to start with the bike upright on its tires supported at the rear. I've got a lift with a clamp at the back. If you haven't got one of those, you can just get yourself a paddock stand. A regular paddock stand will be fine because the weight is still on the suspension. As far as the bike's concerned, it's still on its tires. The suspension has taken the weight. That's very important. No good on a center stand. If you have a lift on the center stand, don't use that to do this because it will give you a false reading. You're not getting enough weight on the forks to align them. It won't work properly. So make sure if you haven't got a paddock stand or you can't get access to one, whatever, just get someone to hold the back of the bike if necessary. And that's just good enough. Then you've got to get on it, up on top. This looks a bit weird. All you have to do is lunge up and down on the forks because if you imagine the bottom yoke and the top yoke are normally clamped in place. We've loosened them off so that they move independently of each other now. But the forks that slide through them, remember that bottom yoke, the hole, the big holes either side that are bored through them, the forks fit through there, but those holes are absolutely parallel. They're absolutely perfect. They're machined that way. So as the forks go through, all you've got to do is plunge them up and down. That allows everything to self-center. It naturally self-centers because it's all designed that way. It's machined straight in the first place. It's just been knocked out of line. As soon as you lunge up and down, it will naturally center due to the way it's made. So all we have to do is get up above it, feet on the pegs, right up above it. And what you want is your weight above the top yoke. So it's a little bit of a weird thing. This is what you do, just plunge up and down. You'll be like motorcycle CPR. There we go, up and down half a dozen times. There we go. And carefully get off the bike. Don't put the bike on a side stand now or something. Keep it upright because everything's lined up now. So you come off the bike. Now I can tighten everything up, but it's got to be tightened up in sequence. So the first thing is to do up the centre nut. The centre nut should be the first thing done up. So pop the socket back on it and just nip that up. And I mean nip it up. Don't do it up so tight that you twist against it because everything else is still loose, but it is set absolutely straight. So we don't want to force anything that will then move it out of line. So just very carefully hold the fork leg so nothing moves and just take the slack out of that nut. Just nip it up, hand tight, nothing more. That's it. And what that does is it brings the top yoke down onto the bottom yoke so everything's collapsed back to where it should be. Do that first, most important, because if you, un if you do up the bottom yoke first, that will hold the forks and it won't allow it to do up. So the front end will be opened up, which is not correct, and you could have wheel play, play in your headstock bearings. So most important, make sure center nut first, nipped up, now 
nip up the bottom ones. So just pop the, there's four of them, Allen key in, finger tight, one, go side to side. Two, I'm literally feeling for the tiniest bit of resistance in the bolt and stopping there. Three, four, there's two each side, so there's four done. That's it. So they're kind of held gently. Now go over them again and do them up proper hand tight. There we go. That's it. So I'll come to them and fully talk them up properly in a minute, but that's it. Center notes done up, bottom yoke's done up, now do the mud guard. And again, either side. Don't wind them all up really tight, one at a time. Do them a little bit at a time. That's pretty obvious really, isn't it? Right, gently. One movement if you can. And nothing moves. There we are. And lastly, the calipers. Just nip them up gently. Both sides. That's it. Right. So at this point, everything that I loosened off is tightened up, just hand tight. So the whole front end is kind of stiff again now, it's all back in position. But before you go doing anything else, make sure you now go over them once again with a torque wrench or whatever you believe is right setting if you're going to do it by hand. Make sure they're properly tight before you go for a test ride. So let's do that. enjoyed that. I hope it was a little easier than it was five years ago. It's a simple process. It hasn't changed. It's decades old and you can do it yourself. It really is simple. The secret is make sure the bike is upright on its wheels if possible, at least if on a paddock stand, and make sure you do that center nut in the middle. If you don't do that, it won't realign. So there we are. That's that done. Uh, join us next time for blinky indicators. They're indicating too fast. <laughs> And I'm going to slow them down with a couple of these. I'll show you how to connect them in, in the right order, so it slows the indicators down and passes MOT. There we go. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Ride safe. And thanks for all your comments. See you next time.